All right, so in the process of building rig 2.5 bazillion, uh, I wanted to have a quick video about soldering. Uh, I think it's a skill that every guitar should have, uh, and it can also save you a lot of money, uh, especially when it comes to the ability to like fix your own guitars, make your own patch cables, etc. Uh, and to give you a quick example of that, uh, you know, you might think, why do I need to? Do why would I want to know how to solder? It scares the crap out of me. And then there's all these great solderless uh, packs out there, like from Lava, you know, GNL, all that stuff. Now, one of those packs costs about 90 bucks. Well, the cable inside that pack is really no more than a buck a foot. And if that, that's on the, you can probably find it for less, but let's just say a buck a foot. So that's $10 of the price goes to the cable. Uh, so it means there's 80 bucks left in the pack. That goes to the remaining eight, or excuse me, 10 connectors. So you're talking eight bucks a connector? Well, that's fine if you're gonna make a really small pedal board, like say three or four pedals, you know, and you don't wanna invest in the overhead of soldering right off the bat, sure. But if you're gonna start making a big pedal board, like 10 pedals, and then you're gonna add uh, loop switchers on top of that, the connectors are where it's gonna add up really fast. So if you think about it, you got 10 pedals. It's at least two connectors a pedal. So it's 20 connectors. If you add loop switching for all of that, that's another 20 connectors. So it's 40 connectors. 40 times eight, that's 320 bucks. As opposed to, you can get, you know, these connectors and these connectors for a buck a piece. So that's $40 for 40 connectors. And then add your cable on top of that. And even if you were to, you know, the overhead of investing in soldering for the first time, which is about 100 bucks, which I'll show you the gear in a second. Uh, even with all that, you're still coming out way ahead. So again, uh, it's a good skill to have and uh, just wanted to show, go over because I know some people are afraid of it. Talk about the gear real quick here. Uh, first thing you'll need is a soldering gun. Uh, this is just a simple soldering gun that I got from Fry's. It was 40 bucks. I recommend the kind that had the base uh, like this, and especially have the little holder because you can get the you can you can find cheaper ones that are usually just the iron by itself. But then you got to find something to put it on, and it's you can burn yourself or whatever the, the, the work environment or set something on fire. Heaven forbid. Uh, one thing I do recommend, and it, I can show you it right here, is this soldering gun uses a regular like three-prong plug. So the, the wire coming off of the iron uses a three-prong prong plug going into the base. Basically, it provides a real stable connection that is not going to come off, and I highly recommend that because I used to work with these old soldering irons when I did electrical engineering uh, like 20 years ago, and the, it had these old screw-on, like three prongs with these little, little weird plastic screw-on connector, and those things would just come, just come loose slightly slightly loose just enough to the point where the elements are no longer getting heated because the disconnected so they're all of a sudden you're in mid solder and it's like the hell happened and that's the worst time that happened so get a good soldering gun that at least has solid connection 40 bucks fries whatever next thing you'll need is a uh, spool of solder uh, this is again i got this from fries for about 15 20 bucks uh, i've had this for almost 10 years and it's not even three quarters of the way done uh, like used yet so, or excuse me, it's not even a quarter of the way used. There's three quarters plus of it left. This stuff lasts a long time. It's just rosin core. I happen to have 0 0.040 diameter, whatever. Just get good, just get solder. <laughs> so you got that. Um, you'll also need a wire stripping tool. Again, you can get these for 10 bucks or less at a hardware store. Uh, and then a pair of wire snips. You probably already have these already in your toolbox, but if not, wire snips, 10 bucks or less. Uh, also, you'll want an X-Acto knife or one of these, if you can find a place that'll sell these individually online. Uh, this came with the lava pack, and what it is, it's a razor blade in there, and it's got these little scooped out edges for the different cable sizes, and it really helps in, uh, the cable is a jacket on the outside that you have to strip off a piece of the jacket to get to the internals of it, and this is really nice for applying just the right amount of pressure without going too deep. Uh, you can, uh, people use X-Acto knives too. The thing with an X-Acto knife I've always found is I tend to cutting too deep and I cut off half the shielding and you gotta start over. Uh, so just a nice little thing to have. And then the last thing you're gonna want is a uh, multimeter. And again, I got this at 20 bucks at Radio Shack and I just do this just because you wanna test your cables to make sure you, the solder is held upright and the connectors are gonna work. So you don't wanna put the whole thing together and all of a sudden realize there's a short in it somewhere and be like, oh God, so 
testing your cables while you work helps prevent that. Now, let's just talk about the cable itself. Uh, now, the one thing you might say, but yeah, but those lava packs and all that stuff, that's the big thing is that cable sounds amazing and all that stuff. It's like, it's true. But you can get good quality sounding cable, you know, in bulk and anywhere. And a lot of those companies, you know, tend to just rebrand existing cable out there because there's already all these other great brands that do make good stuff. So for example, the cable I use is recommended to me by one of the rack house, houses out here that builds rack systems is Belden 8218. Uh, it's also said that this is pretty much what Bill Lawrence based his cable off of. Uh, it's low capacitance, 75 ohm uh, coaxial cable, single conductor with shield. It sounds great. Sounds fantastic. Uh, you can get it it no more, you should pay no more than a buck a foot, and that's on the very high end. The very least, 80 cents a foot, or if not, I've even gotten it uh, when I'm not in a rush, and I don't have to get it locally, uh, I've gotten it as low as 45 cents a foot online. So again, you can save a lot of money in cable, and it's great sounding cable. The next would be, and I'll put some links to this stuff in the, in the comment section so you can look it up, are, these are the, basically the three types of connectors I use. The first is a, a, GL, a company GLS pancake connector. Uh, this is, you can get these for a buck a pop. Uh, and then this is a Reen, R-E-A-N, uh, yeah, R-E-A-N by Neutrix. Uh, and then this is, I don't know if this is Reen or not, but it's a right angle version of the same kind of plug. Uh, and these, a buck, a connector. I think these might be a touch more expensive, like a buck 10 or something like that. And the reason why I have this right angle is because you see how thin it is uh, from here uh, crosswise. Some, connect, some connectors on pedals, like when you have like the back of the Strymon stuff, we have like four connections in a row. This can, the, the thickness of this can be a problem and get it in the way. Uh, so yeah. And now uh, why don't we show you some soldering. 